Okay, hello there, I'm Dennis. And in this video, I'm going to surprise even myself. Instead of installing an Arch or an Arch Linux derivative or flavor distribution, I'm going to install my favorite, probably of all time. I sort of say I like it better than I do Arch. I use Arch all the time, but I do have a machine that has MX Linux on it, and I've had it on there since middle of last year, I guess. And uh, I thoroughly enjoy it. And I, I, I went ahead and I, I'm in the, right now I've booted up to the USB stick. So this is a live environment. I went ahead and installed OBS. And up until I get to the point of rebooting, I'll, I'll find a place and try to save that. So that I can have it even if I have to plug in a USB stick and copy it over to that. So I'll have this video. So when you get booted into it, the USB stick, you burned your ISO to a USB stick and you booted into it, you're going to be presented with this welcome screen, the MX welcome screen. And this version is 19.2 Petito Fio. And you can see it gives you the password. If you're asked for a password, it's demo. The root password is root. So the username and password is demo demo and root for the root uh, password. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the installer here, and I don't know if you, oh, I double click that, let's see, I hope I didn't mess that up. I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this, because we'll see that again. Alright, so, first screen we'll see, let me see if I can make this a little larger also. First screen you'll see after you double click or, or single click on the, and when you execute the installer, <laughs> One thing I liked about it, when you right click on it, it does say execute on the icon. That's You don't see that on all distros. You don't. Just check it out if you're curious. Right click on a desktop icon and see what your options are. And uh, a lot of them don't have the execute option there. But anyway, a Windows user would be looking for an execute option. So this is the first screen. It says enjoy using the MX Linux. Support the MX Linux and it tells you how. And it tells you how you can go there and get support and also uh, interact with the MX uh, crowd. All right. And it's, it uh, correctly picked up a PC keyboard, US layout. That works. And one thing I like about the installer here, you'll see in a second, we'll have the option to save all of the live changes that I've made. Usually when you boot into the MX Linux, you're going to find your taskbar on the uh, in a vertical position on the far left side of your screen. You'll notice I've already moved mine. I put the categories on the left hand side. I've done a lot. I've done most of the customization I'm going to do. Uh, I may take the conky out of there. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm never sure how I feel about conky. Sometimes they're kind of neat just to look up and see. Uh, but anyway, uh, so I've done a lot of this knowing that the installer is going to ask me do I want to save those changes? And I'm going to say, yeah. So in theory, every change that I have made to the appearance, I went through here, settings, and like I've turned the screensaver off, I've adjusted the power. Uh, so if I hit the power button, it'll shut down, etc. So I'm hoping it'll save all those things. So your second screen here after the welcome is partition the disk. And I do need to do this because this is a, new disk and it says it's 500 but as you can see it's 465 and this is also 24 megabytes huh I wonder what that's all about I'm going to delete that and just combine all that that's left but I need to hit the apply button apply yep let's give ourselves a new partition table create a partition table DOS it's a legacy boot. First thing I'm going to need is some swaps. So we're going to right click and select new. And I'm going to give this, let's see, what is it, 8196, 8192 megabytes. And this will be for the swap, Linux swap. We can even label it swap. All right, I'll say add, 
And I'm going to right click again and I'm going to say new. And this time I'm going to only give it 100 gigs, which will be 102400 megabytes. And that'll be 100 gigs. And it's going to be file ext4. The label, this is going to be our root drive. I don't need cap there. The root drive, and I'll say add. And then the rest of this, new. Leave all the rest of it the same. And this will be the home partition. <coughs> Excuse me, cut. All right, I'm going to click, say add. And now you can see I've got three partitions, a swap a root and a home directory or in the Linux, uh, windows world page c d <laughs> let's see do i need to do something with a flag no i don't have an option to even manage a flag all right which is cool should say okay we're going to apply the pending actions And that's an advantage that the MX installer has over a lot of the as well. You it almost it pretty much tells you to partition your disk, and it opens up Gpart rather than letting the installer actually partition it like the Calamaris installer does. All right, I'm gonna say close. Now I wonder if it'll let me manage the flag. Sure it will. And if it's got a swap here, I'm gonna put it on it. I do not, but I do have boot, DAG, ESP, that's for your EFI partitions. I don't have one there, so I'm going to say close, and we're good to go. Exit out of that. All right, now we're going to custom install on existing partitions, which is SDA. All right, I'm going to say next. All right, root partition, that will be SDA2. It's extend, extended for file partition. Home will be SDA3 there. Swap, we're going to have swap, will be SDA1. And boot will be the root drive. So we got SDA2 as root, SDA3 as home, SDA1 as swap. Preserve data in home. This is another beauty of this installer. If you're just upgrading, say, from, from an older version to the newer version here. You can click on that, and it will save but your home partition. You won't have to worry about losing your partition. In theory, when you deal with computers, everything is in theory. <laughs> so in theory, if you check that, if you're upgrading, you should be able to preserve your home data. Uh, you can also use the installer to check the disk, the hard disk, for bad blocks if you want to. Of course, that's going to take longer. Longer, It's going to be like running scan disk. But I'm happy with what I see here. All right. And it also gives you, you know, t defines what you're doing here. Uh, you can read it. If you don't know what to do, you can read here, and it'll tell you what to do. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. I'm going to click Next. The MX installer will now format and destroy the data on the following partitions. SDA2 and SDA3. MX install installer will now perform the following actions. Configure SDA1 as swap space. These actions cannot be undone. Do you want to continue? Yes. Okay. Install grub, master boot record, that is all great. Uh, if if uh, you was installing on an EFI or UEFI, you would select ESP here, but we're going with master boot record. And it's going on SDA, no partition SDA, the disk. All right, I can say next. All right, the computer name. It makes is pretty good there. Let's see, I'm going to just D8. Computer domain, example, that's your host name. That's fine. Samba, I'm not going to be using Samba. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. If you were going to be using your computer to network, uh, between computers in your house or on our server or what have you, you you're definitely probably going to need that, especially if you're going to be using Microsoft. If you're going to be connecting to Microsoft uh, machines that have or running Microsoft programs. Okay, I'm going to click next. American English, United States, that's correct. In America, that's correct. New York is not correct, but it's a simple matter of finding my 
time zone, which I happen to know. It's in Chicago, same time zone. And I like the, not the military time, but the 20, uh, 12 hour clock. And here you can, service settings, you can view all of those if you so choose. Again, on the left panel here, it's giving you, uh, it's telling you what it's wanting you to do. It's giving you instructions. That's pretty nice. This is a great installer. <laughs> You may already can tell why I like MX Linux. It just really is a good system. Okay, so my username. I wonder if it'll let me use a capital. It didn't. It did not gripe about it. Default user password. Okay, root password. Yeah, you can do several things here. If if you're setting up a computer and installing MX Linux on a computer in a family situation, but you want each of your family to have their own user uh, profiles, groups, and you want to keep yours separate from all the other systems, and you want to be the administrator uh, over your system, your password needs to be, be different than the default user password. Uh, that way you'll have a root password and have root control over your own computer. Okay, but I'm not going to auto log in, although you could. Now here, look at this option, save live desktop changes. So all the changes that I made are, are going to be kept, in theory. <laughs> so I'm good with what's going on here. It's almost finished, 85%. It's getting ready to do the grub. It's copying over the new system. All right, uh, I believe we're good here. It didn't buck against my capital and my name there. Let's find out. Nope. Nope, didn't say a word about the capital. If it fails, that's the reason why. So that's pretty good. Let's have a look around while that's installing. It's not too far from being finished. It's installing Grub. By the time I open that menu <laughs> and talk about anything in here, and I turned on my system sounds, I love being able to have control over my system sounds. It's just a pet peeve of mine. That's probably the only complaint I have about Arts Linux, vanilla Arts install, is not having system sounds. But that's just me. I, I, I usually turn most of them off, but I do like some of them. <laughs> so I really, I haven't installed anything except OBS Studio, so anything you see in here is going to be, we're finished. Automatically reboot the system when the installer is closed. No, let's uncheck that, say finished. Say awesome. Okay. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna be closing this and I'm gonna try to find a place to save it before I reboot. And I may have to actually stick a USB stick in and save it over to that USB stick. Uh, I'll be back on the freshly installed MX Linux. I booted into my system now and as you can see it got OBS running. I also got a whole bunch of packages I'm sure is fixed to be updated. Uh, automatically entry, yes, that's a beautiful thing there. Automatically close the terminal when the upgrade is complete. I'm going to say go ahead and upgrade. It should ask me for my password. Okay, now, for some reason, this terminal has a different preference than your regular terminal. I'm not sure what the dif difference is. reason why I know that is because I turned the transparency almost off about like it is here. Oh man, what a terrible font that is. Let me change that right off the bat. <laughs> Did I change the font? The brace the sounds bold. I don't think I, I might have made it bold, but I didn't. I was all, there we go. My space bold. That'll work for now. I wonder if there's a source code in here. Well, you got to learn how to spell source first. No, it's not in here. Let me get back to that. Oh, well, there we go. Let's try that one. Yeah, there we go. At least you can read it. Make it a little bigger. There we go. See that a lot better. So I'm gonna, I guess I'm going to pause the video.
and come back after the updates because I really don't want to do anything until the updates. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to do the codex and then I'm going to install some popular apps uh, and then I'll set this or not to show on startup any longer. It's easy access, easily accessed from the menu here. You just type in MX welcome or just welcome, I guess, yep, right there. But you can get to it real easily. But I usually go ahead and install my codex first, then the popular apps. And the tweaking, I've already done a lot of it. Some of it I'm fixing to do. I guess I could do that while I'm waiting here. Let's see. Panel preferences. Make them bigger so I can see it. Not that big. Tell it to adjust automatically, which it just did. Might have to find it. There's a section where you can adjust the lower right hand side of what would be called the systems tray. Might have to find it. Okay, so that date finally got finished there. This will be step three. Uh, first thing I do is I normally do the apps. <laughs> it's going to ask you for your password. And it's going to say, Are you sure? And then in some jurisdictions their distribution may be limited so the user must meet local regulations this application allows you to install restricted codecs i'm going to say okay it's my responsibility I'll say thank you very much codecs have been downloaded and installed successfully okay and this right here is another beautiful part of MX Linux. And I know that there's Arch install installers uh, that have this same opportunity during the ins installation to ins in during the installation process to go ahead and install all of these programs or any of these programs. But I kind of like the idea of setting it up first. A new user's not going to know what Audacious is. Uh, he's going to have to read something that tells him what Audacious, Audacious is. He, first of all, he, he's just going to be, he's going to think that the install, the installed operating system of his choice is automatically going to have some sort of media player on it, like Windows Media Player. That's just an assumption that a Windows guy would make. To me, it just makes more sense to get the installation over with and then choose your software of choice but to each his own i could see it either way in fact when i do my arts installs i actually usually go ahead and just install everything so show you how easy this is we'll just go ahead and pick a couple here audacity or audacious audacity uh, you gotta have that dead beef moc pie i'm good on those i'm gonna install and you just click on the install, and there it goes. The following were selected. Click to show details for the list of changes. I'm good. Okay. All right. It would have shown me how, how big it was, what the after install, how much more disk space it was going to use. Things that are not particularly interesting unless. You know, it's your first time, and you want to know exactly how. Or you limited disk space, I guess. So, I'm going to go ahead and stop this video as well and go into another segment after I've got everything installed. I'm going to install a bunch of programs in here, and I'm also going to install, uh, like Caden Live, I'm going to install that and go ahead and do the editing right here in MX Linux and talk about some of the benefits of using MX Linux and maybe a drawback or two there. I've seen a few things and I'll show you. Okay, well, I'm gonna close this out for now and I'll be back in the next segment. Okay, so I've made a few minor, minor adjustments here. Uh, first of all, in my OBS studio, I had to go in and actually tweak uh, the filters and the audio and the microphone, both here and in the uh, Pulse Audio Mixer, I guess that's Pulse Audio Mixer, uh, had to adjust, make slight adjustments to those and the filters 
that I normally use, but those those are just slightly different. They're not exactly. I was getting some popping sound as if you was playing a guitar that wasn't grounded well, and every time you touched the strings, you heard a little pop. Well, that's the kind of pop that I was getting, and it was clipping, and that was very disturbing. But other than that, the I was picking up an awful lot of noise when I talk. The that was when I wasn't speaking, I was getting the outside noise that you would expect to get. But when I started talking, it seemed like the outside noise was actually amplified. But anyway, I managed to tweak that out and got that right. And I decided to turn my attention down here. And you can see the panel, the, what I call the systems tray, is larger now. And I'll show you how I did that. First of all, you see this, I don't know, I hope you can see it, this little plug thing. It looks like a power plug. If you're on a laptop, that's what that's for. It's, it's determining the battery life of what your battery's doing. But I'm not on a laptop, so I'm going to go up here. And what I did was I left clicked on it and I selected the settings. And right here under XFCE Power Manager, you can turn that system tray icon off. If you're on a, de a desktop, you don't need that. On a laptop, it's a good idea. Okay, and then in order to make this larger to match my clock size more better, more better, I right, found an empty space if I could, and I right clicked and I went and selected properties. And right here, you get this, you can adjust that size. Watch the size as I go up. It's at 32 now. So you can see it just go. Well, it stopped down there only because it don't have room. I'd have to enlarge my the whole uh, taskbar, I believe. 32 seemed to be just right. It's as big as my clock, and I can see it all just fine. I think that is awesome, 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 though, that you have that opportunity to adjust each side of this separately. That's, that's pretty nice. Okay, so I'm going to show off this little tool that's... Uh, you get by default in MX Linux when you install it, you're going to have this under the MX Tools section. And this is uh, their tools that they have developed for themselves, by themselves, for MX Linux. And it's a shame. I wish I could put this in my arch. <laughs> uh, AUR, I mean, I'd love to build it. It'd work just great couple of really nice features in here of course they're all nice feature features they so you got the live usb maker where you can create put in my password where you can create a, a iso or a, you can burn a iso to a usb image close that out so here you got a snapshot and it's going to ask me for my password Snapshot is a utility that creates a bootable image, a bootable image of your working system that you can use for storage or distribution, meaning you can install it on another hard drive. So if you make this ISO, if you make a new one every week, then you'll always have a, a fresh backup. Uh, you can continue working with undemanding applications while it is running, so you can do whatever else it is you was doing. And it tells you right here uh, about you how much space is actually used or what have you. I'm not going to run it again, but you can. And uh, it's very easy. You can name it whatever you want to. And here's the folder where it's going to store it in home slash snapshot. Of course, you can change that. Uh, what a very, very nice tool to include in your distribution. Uh, boot options, boot repair, user manager, so you can add a user very easily so you just fill out the forms and say apply that's a unique feature codex installer i've already done that what an awesome awesome uh, piece of uh, software for any any distribution control alt t gets you a terminal let's see Bring up Neo Fetch real quick. MX8664 on an Optiplex 7010 using the 419 kernel. Uh, Uptime's 26 minutes so far this morning. 
downloaded package, packages 2423 flashes the shell resolution 1920 by 1080 desktop xfce the windows manager xfwmm4 graybird graybird papyrus uh, monospace memory right now it says it's using 1.7 gigs and i'm not real sure why let's see i do have a couple programs open but nothing heavy not doing anything let's see what system monitor that's another beautiful thing about mx you can get your gnome disk utility and gnome system monitor installed so this is showing uh two gigs so i'm not sure i know the monitor itself takes up some but maybe what i've got open is taking up quite a bit usually very low on resources so i encourage you to use this mx tools as much as you can go through it even if you don't understand it just go through it and look looking through and see i'm going to close out of my mx tools here but i certainly encourage you to get uh, familiar with the stuff that's in here there's awesome tools in here you'll you'll be wishing you could install it on your arch <laughs> So I'm going to go to their web page here, and this will be installed by default, their web links. And they have such great support. You see they got all these categories for support. Very well implemented. If you look on DistroWatch, they've been on number one here ever since I've been familiar with Linux, uh, beginning in the middle of last year. They've been right there in that spot. And you can see that if you go by these hits per day, they've got 4,077, 4, over a thousand more than their nearest competitor, Manjaro. And Manjaro is a good, at least up until now, pretty good distribution. Oh. So they're, they're, they got a new one. MX is, this is kind of disappointing me a little bit, scary. They've got a new release coming out, a release candidate, which has the KDE version on it. And why I say it's scary is because they've done such a great job on uh, the XFCE desktop. Just imagine what they, what's going to happen with KDE once they get all the little uh, bugs or what have you worked out and get it set up the way they want it. So, you know, I keep asking myself, well, why, why, why do I like MX so much? <laughs> so I decided to do a Google on it. And you'd be, you'd be amazed why I use MX Linux was my search. MX Linux makes transitioning from any desktop operating system simple. It provides a computing platform that is a bit different and very reliable. MX Linux is a powerful, easy to use computing platform and goes beyond lightweight performance without filling your computer with software bloat. That was 2019. Now, I don't know what the definition of software bloat is, but I can tell you this, you you do get a quite a bit of stuff right out of the box. Uh, stuff you may or may not use. If you don't need it, like here, I am I prefer Qubit Torrent, I'll just uninstall Transmission, which came in with the MX Linux. So I'm not sure what the definition of bloat is. That could be an arguable point right there. It does come with quite a few programs. Most of them are really good programs. <laughs> Why is MX Linux so popular? It's popular because it makes Debian more user friendly for beginning to intermediate. No such, not such, not so much the non technical Linux use. It has never, it has newer packages from Debian backports, repos, vanilla Debian uses older packages. MX uses, MX users also benefit from a custom tools which are great time savers, which is what we just looked at. And I, I happen to disagree with this a little bit. Uh, it's not so much for the non-technical. Yeah. As far as on a scale of how much I know about computers, you'd have to put me way down there in the bottom. I know very little, especially consider, compared to some, uh, some of these devs, developers, or anybody that really studies a computer. So if I can do it, then it means it is for beginning to intermediate. I kind of disagree with that statement. I think that may be a little scary for a new user. And here in the next category, it says, Is MX Linux good for beginners? If you are looking for a desktop Linux distribution that is simple yet different, 
reliable and runs well on legacy hardware then mx linux is a good choice mx linux is a cooperative venture between the antics and the former memphis linux communities hence the name mx linux so is it better than a is ubuntu better than mx here's another one i disagree with not as good as ubuntu but most companies release Debian packages, and MX Linux benefits from that. Supports both 32 and 64 bit processors and has a good driver support for older hardware like network cards and graphic cards. And that is true. I've installed this on 32 bit systems, and it just worked flawlessly. Uh, my sister's got one, uh, my younger sister's got one that's got M uh, MX on it. It's a 32-bit old laptop, and it man just blazes. It never run as good when it was new. All right, I'm gonna show you some things here that you may or may not know. I'm just gonna close out all these tabs, get them out of my view here, close them all. Thank you. All right, uh, one thing you may or may not know is about the clock and how to adjust it. Well, if you let me close this out and show you how to get to it. Go to your clock. You go right click and go properties it'll, it'll bring up to or odds clock preferences and in here you can change what it's saying you don't it's mine set at 9 34 a.m but i could have 24 hour time look at all the choices here starting from right here all the way down to z <laughs> that you can change include or what have you and this is the way I got mine set up right now with just the clock, but no, nothing in particular. But in order to set the color, let's see what happens here. There's the color, and we're going to change that. Let's make it uh, sort of a dark blue, maybe. No, let's make this, the background, a little more yellowish green. Say OK. OK. All right. I'm sorry, that made the foreground is the clock itself. The background color. Let me change that again. Let me go back to foreground color, my clock. Let's make that. Uh, actually, that's not bad like it is. Background color. Let's make it as dark as we can get it. Say okay. Set the background color. All right, so now you see how it pops out. And you can change that to any color, the background or the clock itself. You can adjust the height. You can adjust the width. <laughs> it, this and the font. I mean, I can actually. I've got it big enough where I can actually see it without my glasses. Yep, 9:35 a.m. <laughs> you know, you pick your favorite font and the size you want. Uh, change the background. Change the font. The actual colors of the what they call in the foreground. I mean, this is awesome. And. I mean, there's more to do it. This is for a, a system D, and a, this all comes off of a, out of Arch. Uh, but you can still run the same, some of the same commands. But here you can, if you want to see, here's what I want to show you. If you want to see the man pages for the STRF, STRF time. Uh, let's see, let's copy that. Control Alt T, uh, Control V, Control Shift V, hit enter. Uh, you can see you get a lot of information. Not only just the codes here, but you get more specific what they do, and which is pretty cool. But there is a way to get a, even more in depth information, and that's running this one. So the first one was the man page for STRF time. This one is info space core utils, all one word, space uh, single uh, quote date space invocation in uh, single quote. Hit enter. And this brings out a whole lot of more stuff. Now, I think this is Vim as well. So if you're not familiar with Vim, you might ought to stay <laughs> out of here. I don't even know how to close out. It's something to do with colon, colon, Q, I think. But anyway, you can see there's a ton of information on it. And I, the way I get out of it is just close. But you can take your, your clock 
and adjust that. To the, I mean, it's, it's 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 pretty much unlimited. You could have that thing run across all the way to the board and tell you what second of the day it is if you wanted to. So let me close out of that. Got another little gold nugget here. I'm going to right click on my start menu button, go to properties, and I'm going to go to the tab that says panel button, and I'm going to click on that icon beside the word icon, and it'll take a minute to load. Always has. There's only a couple times where I've seen this open up almost immediately. It wasn't on MX. Okay, so it brings you, it opens you up by default to uh, user local share icons, and these are all PNGs and FBGs. And their logo happens to be a PNG, and it's looking for any kind of image file. So if I go here, local share, and go to backgrounds, MX Linux, wallpapers, let's see, we find, yeah, it's not a card. Oh, let's try that one. Let's say okay. And look, it changed. <laughs> So you don't have to have an icon file. Let's see if it'll open me back up to default. Well, are you going to open back up? It says, no, I like this photo. So share. Icons. Back to the MX. Say OK. Oh, uh, yeah, let's go through the menu real quick. And... Let's see what we've got now. Keep in mind, I've already installed uh, quite a bit of stuff. OBS Studio, Krita, Gnome Disk, Audacity. I think GUB, CBU, and uh, Simple Screen Recorder came in by default. So let's, let's just start at games here. And you got, I had, I, I installed a, a solitaire, it works just fine. Uh, games. I selected in the install to go Super Tux and Super Tux Cart. The rest of these came in by default. Under graphics, we got Blender, GIMP, Image Magic, Krita, LibreOffice Draw, Nomax, Shotwell. Simple scan. The the printer and scanner and stuff is already here. And this uh, X in view, I uh, got that from the package popular apps. Under internet, I got Firefox by default. Qubit torrent, I had to do. I did that through the apps, the popular apps. I'll get rid of Thunderbird and Transmission because I don't use them. Multimedia. Now here I downloaded or installed quite a bit of stuff. And DVD Styler, I usually have to build that through the AUR. It was available right here through Synaptic Package Manager or through their simple, uh, their uh, <laughs> popular apps. But you can see, I mean, I got all the stuff that you would need, I think. And you need got special categories. Let me get rid of the screen there. MX Tools offers all kind. It opens up, shows you the. You'll remember in the settings panel there, we got MX Tweak and MX Tools, but you can get to that through your Start menu separately on MX Tools. And this conky up here, you used to be able to. Uh, I think it was right, Alt and le uh, left click and drag it around, or right click and drag it around. I can't seem to get any of that to work. Uh, so what you have to do in order to edit that, let's go up here to MX Tools. Let's go to MX Conky. And through this, we can, uh, let's see, uh, let's go to Conky Manager. And here it lists all the different Conkeys that are available and gives you a preview down at the bottom so you can see what each one looks like. I mean, it might be neat to go through them. You know, run them a week or two on each one, see what I was available. But you can see any one you click on is going to give you a preview. And the one that we're using should be checked. There it is, right there. And for the position of the thing, now you go up here to the gear cog, which is different than this one. This one has more to do with the 
Compu Manager, I think, run its system. So if you can you can turn it off where it don't even run. In fact, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> but let's see, going back to the gear cog there, you can see top, middle, bottom, left. Just hit apply, and there it goes. Put it back up in the top middle, hit apply, and there it goes. Oh, uh, you can mess with the size of it, transparency, the time you can't mess with because of this time down here that has got it locked out. I think. For now, though, I'm gonna untick any of it, and I'm gonna go back up here, and I'm gonna say, "Don't even start it." At, when I reboot, say thank you and goodbye, Conky. And you got here. It, is, it says, "Huh." Oh, let me put it back then. Which one was it? Don't really matter. Let's use that one. Say okay. Can't hardly see it, but it says to move is Alt and left click. Alt, left click. Alt, left click. Resize. Alt and right click. See, so I'm not getting any response out of that. I'm not sure. That may be uh, something in this version right here. I'm not sure. Let me get rid of that conky altogether. That was a terrible conky anyway. <laughs> so that's how you do your conkies. By default, when you're using the Synaptic Package Manager, which is going to require your password. Here you almost have to know the name of the package you're looking for, but if you type it in up there where it says quick filter, you can see I've got it installed. But one thing I like about it, let me do this here. Just type in VirtualBox, and here you can see I didn't have to install any of these. These all came in. Uh, when I selected it in the popular apps, all these guest utils and extensions came in by default. But you can see when you type it in here in the Synaptic Package Manager, you can see what, what you do have. And if there's anything you need that you don't have, there's libvert stuff. That's how that works. And of course, you know, you just left click on it and it'll say mark for installation. You select that and get off there for it to do something get out of there one thing i didn't mention so much during the installation you get two chances to fully encrypt your system here in the beginning this is a like within the first step or two I believe uh, after you've done your keyboard if you select auto installing using the entire disk you'll have this option to encrypt and that will just encrypt the whole disk and i don't know how it would part uh, partition it up or divide the disk up but from what i'm seeing it looks like it'll just make one large partition i don't know that for sure the second chance though after you run your partition tool and it gets time to dedicate or allocate which one is your root partition your home and your swap if I select this one right here, the root file will be encrypted. And you can do them individually or all of them. Uh, a lot of people want to encrypt their swap because uh, apparently swap can be hacked as long as it stays a certain temperature, cold temperature. So, you, so that makes it very easy to encrypt your system. And if you're doing this on a laptop, that's probably a really good idea. <laughs> So I just wanted to point that out, that you have that option during the installation, which is really nice. This, uh, this is a bash top. I've been using this for about a couple of weeks now, and I, I like it a lot better than I do H-Top. It seems to, uh, it's easier to, easier to read. It has a, a lot of options that you can uh, change to a feel and appearance of it. But here, let's see what we got. Each one of our CPUs, and I just closed a bunch of stuff out is running about 20 percent okay on the memory it says i'm using 1.39 gigs they got 29 available 29.3 free swap I gave it eight but it's showing 7.99 uh 
Uh, I hadn't used any of that on the disk space now with all my programs installed and everything I can think of that I need. It's used 11.2 gigs <laughs> and there's 81, 80, almost 82 gigs free. So it only use less than 12 gigs and that's, of course, now that's going to go up with all the updates and stuff. Anyway, on my home drive, I've got 61 gigs. 271 free and this is available in the arts repositories as well you close out of that but one thing I want to show here is this updater if you don't know you right click on that and select preferences now if you hold your mouse, let me close that out please if I hold my mouse over it it should say updates available so you'll know that's the right icon right right click on that icon select preferences now you can tell this thing to not start. Right now, it's, I've got auto start selected. So when I reboot, this will start automatically and it will check for updates. And if there's any available, it'll tell you. It does not say you have to install the updates. It just uh, lets you be aware that they are available if you want to install them. One of the things that's pretty cool here is you can uh, select the only when it's a full upgrade or a basic upgrade. So you can get just wait till you get your upgrades until they've got a full one ready. Uh, open uh, MX Updater View and Graphic Upgrade window. We see that. Automatically answer yes. Automatically close the terminal when it's finished. Now this is pretty interesting. This is the icon that they use right here. And you can see what they are. I'm going to select Classic one here and say OK. And it'll disappear for a second, but when it comes back, now you can see there's a package there and there's nothing in it. Right click and select preferences, put it back on the, the default one here. Use transparent interior for no updates wireframe. In other words, come back, you can see through it. Transparent now, if there was updates, it would go solid. And, you know, I could go on for days, really, talking about MX Linux. You know, just how it performs for me and everything. I, I really have had not very few glitches. There is one glitch. Let me uh, see if I can bring this up. Now, I can't go into, I can open the settings. But I, I'm not sure what's happening here. If I change any one of these settings through this method here, going through the settings, when I change it, uh, it, it may or may not make the change, but regardless, it will close the entire program out. But if I do something right now, it's just going to close this out. Uh, so I better not demonstrate that. But it does do that. It crashes. It just goes away, <laughs> and you have to restart. So to start with, I had to go into the settings on uh, each one of these and microphone in, in particular. Now, once you added your filters in here, uh, it wouldn't crash using filters or whatever. It was only when you're changing your settings. And I was looking to see if it held. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much done what I wanted to. I haven't tried to change anything in there, though. It is set up the way I need it, so that's all really good. The OBS is up and running well, other than that one, whatever you call that. Glitch. Uh, we got Firefox for a main browser. Like I said, I could go on. I could. <laughs> I could go on with about MX. It just works. There's no. And if you did have a problem, you go straight to their website, and you can bet if you have a problem, there's been somebody else had that problem as well, and they've got it posted on how to how to overcome whatever that is. Like on this OBS thing, if I did some research. I'm pretty sure I can find out what's happening with that. And uh, give MX a try. <laughs> I love it. I hadn't actually got away from it at all. Like I said, I blame it on DT and Distro Watch because uh, he showed me Distro Watch. Distro Watch MX has been listed number one. That was the first one I tried. Well, <laughs> when I installed this, I said, you know, I like this system. It's really, really good. And it's been on one of my computers, like I said, ever since. And so I could go on. I mean, it's really, really nice system. I think everybody ought to give it at least a try. 
And I think there's a lot more people that use it that let on that use it too. That's what I think. <laughs> so I guess I'm going to close this out and I will catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>